All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to separate the components of a mixture of solids. I'm um, using a new technique today for grade 9 advanced science. We're going to learn how to filter something, and we're going to use an old technique. We're going to talk about evaporating as well. So in this mixture of solids, this is for students who are going to miss an experiment that we would normally do at school, we have three solids. We have charcoal. Charcoal is a black powder. Um, it's insoluble in water, it's insoluble in alcohol, so it does not dissolve in either of those things. Um, it's very fine, it, you don't want to get on your hands, it'll stain your hands black. You write with it, right? Charcoal is like ground up pencil lead in a way. We also have sand. We did an experiment earlier with the percentage of air in sand, so that's just normal sand. So charcoal and sand. And then we have table salt or sodium chloride white table salt. And these three substances have been mixed together into this here, this mixture. You can see there's little bits of black solid in there, so there's some large pieces of charcoal. But then the sand also looks a little bit darker, looks grayer than the sand normally does, and that's because there's charcoal also. It's hard to see, but there is some, sal some salt in there as well. So the purpose of the experiment is to separate the three components of the mixture and obtain pure samples of each component. We're not trying to achieve 100% separation, so we don't have to get all of the charcoal or all of the salt. But what we would like is to end up having a pure sample of each of those three substances. So let me pause the video here if you can and think about what you might do first if you were given this mixture of materials and you were asked to separate them. Hint, hint, we're going to be using these techniques, but pause the video and see if you can think about a plan for yourself. What might you do first with that mixture of substances? So let me point out there's no one perfect way to do this. There are some things that are better than others, but you might have, you might have um, planned out a slightly different strategy than myself. But I've decided one of the first things I'm going to do is take a test tube and I'm going to pour some or all, if my sample wasn't that big, I'll pour all or some of that sample into the test tube. So I'm pouring in some sand, some salt, some charcoal, into the bottom of the test tube. Now, when I think about this, I know that the, the, the uh, charcoal and the sand are insoluble in water, they're insoluble in alcohol, but I do know that salt, the table salt, is soluble in water. So I've decided I'm going to take some water, and I've got a faucet here, I'm going to add some tap water to the test tube. The exact amount isn't that important, but the more water I add, the more water I'll have to get rid of later. So I've added about a third full of, of water, and now I can see, even just having added it, I can see that there's some black charcoal suspended in the water. There's a little bit of black charcoal at the top. There's still some black charcoal at the bottom along with the sand, and I'm pretty sure the salt is still a lot of it down there in, in the mixture. But if I take the stopper and I just shake that up, can you think about what's happening now? As I shake, 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 nothing's happening to the sand other than getting wet. Nothing's happening to the charcoal other than getting wet. But I'm pretty sure that the salt that's in there is dissolving in the water. So by adding the water and shaking it, I'll shake for another few seconds, I'm pretty sure that any salt that's in there will end up dissolved in the water. Now when I stop shaking, the sand, which is very dense, immediately sank to the bottom. And now the liquid is got a lot of gray charcoal suspended in it. It's gray. I'm pretty sure if I let this sit for a long time, it would settle back to the bottom. But maybe right now I can do something kind of clever. If I take the stopper off, I've got a beaker here. What if I use a technique we've used before? I'll decant. I'll pour the liquid out of the test tube and I'll leave behind the sand, maybe with a little bit of water. So at this point, I'm pretty sure that in the test tube, I've got mostly sand. I think you can see that. There's a bit of charcoal still in there that I'll have to deal with. 
but that's mostly just sand. And here in my beaker, I've got the dissolved salt, and I've got a significant amount of charcoal that would have been in there. Remember, there's still some charcoal in the test tube, but we've just managed to do some separating. The salt is now in there, the sand is in here, and there's a bit of charcoal in both. Pause the video and see if you can predict what I'm going to do next. So again, there's not just one thing you could do next. You might be having a slightly different plan than me, but I've decided now to do this filtration step. You may have done a filtration back in, in middle school at some point, or maybe in elementary school. I've got here a piece, a couple of pieces. I really only need one. This is called filter paper or a filter circle, all right? It's just paper that is porous, so water can pass through it. It's kind of like a paper towel, but a little bit different. And here is a funnel, so a funnel. And over here, I've got a support stand. These are underneath your bench. And in the drawers at, in our lab, we have these clamps. This is a filtering clamp or a funnel clamp. And on one side, it's got these beveled holes. And on the other side, it's just flat. So I'm going to take it to the side with the beveled holes sort of carved out. I'm going to have that facing up and the flat side or it's just flat wood, that's going to face down. I'm going to take this and put it on my support stand. So let me slide it onto the support stand. And I'm going to tighten it over here to hold it in place. Now that that beveled hole is going to hold the funnel. So I'm going to put a funnel in there like that. And then I'm going to have to put something underneath the funnel. And I've got here, you can put anything. You could put a test tube, you could put a beaker, a flask. I'm going to put an evaporating dish. Okay, we've used evaporating dishes before. Can you already sort of predict what I'm going to be doing? So I'm going to lower that a little bit. If you don't want to have the funnel so high up that things drip through the funnel and splash, if this was a test tube or a beaker underneath the funnel, I would have the neck of the funnel, the, that little, this piece here, I uh, would have it just inside the mouth of the beaker like that if I was collecting in a beaker, or just inside the mouth of a test tube like that if I were, whole, if I were collecting it in a test tube. Now I'm going to be pouring things through the funnel and liquid is going to come through the funnel. The liquid that goes through the funnel has a name, we call it the filtrate. The liquid that goes through the funnel is the filtrate. Now if I just poured this liquid with my salt and my charcoal, if I just poured this in the funnel, it would be kind of dumb. It would just all go through the funnel into the dish below. The funnel wouldn't be doing anything. So this is where the filter paper comes into play. I'm going to take the filter paper, the circle, I'm going to fold it in half to make a semicircle. Okay. And then I'm going to take that semicircle and fold it in half once more to make a quarter circle. All right. So there's my funnel by filter paper folded twice. And then if you look at this end of the filter paper, we now have four layers of filter paper. I'm going to grab three of those layers and pull them to one side and one layer on the other side to create a little cone. And that cone goes into my funnel. Now if I let go, it'll pop up. So a good thing to do is to run some water into the filter paper. So I'm just going to do that underneath the sink here. Run some water, get it wet, and dump out the excess water. Now that the filter paper's wet, it more easily sticks into the funnel. It's going to get it all wet, pour out the excess water, and now the filter paper stays in the funnel. So do you see what we're about to do? This is filtration. The liquid that I had in that test tube that I decanted into the beaker, it has dissolved salt, and it has those charcoal particles. The charcoal particles are not soluble. I can see them suspended in the, in the water. It looks dark and gray. I'm going to pour that into the filter paper, and I don't want to fill it all the way to the top. 
never fill the filter paper to the very top because you will then overflow and it'll go underneath the filter paper and it's not actually going to filter. So I'm going to pour it through into the filter paper in the funnel and I'm not sure if you can see that in the video but it is not filled to the very top. And now we're going to let gravity do its job. Gravity is pulling the liquid down through the filter paper and anything that was dissolved in the water, including the water itself, is the filtrate and you can see it possibly dripping down through the bottom of the funnel and I'm collecting that in the dish. So you remember the salt, the table salt, was soluble in water so that salt and the water is dripping into the evaporating dish, that liquid is the filtrate. In the funnel I can see that the black charcoal powder is getting caught. It's not passing through the filter paper. Only the liquid is passing through with the dissolved substances. So that black charcoal powder is going to be in my filter paper at the end. We're going to call that the residue. The residue is the solid material that's caught by the filter paper. So I'm going to let that drip just for a few more minutes. There's a bit, little bit of liquid left. Now what about this charcoal that's still here in the sand? I can basically, in a very low-tech way, I can repeat what we were doing earlier. I can add some more water to the test tube, get my beaker ready, put my stopper on, and I can just shake that up again and that charcoal will get suspended in the water and then I can quickly decant it and try to not get any sand. I think I got a little bit of sand in there. That was a bit of an error. I can repeat that several times. If I do that several times, there'll be very little charcoal left in the sand. It'll be essentially pure sand. There may be some large pieces of charcoal so what I could do is I could use some tweezers or even a metal scoop if I had to and I could reach in and I could take out those large pieces of charcoal or I could dump all of that into another dish and then more easily take them out and I'll be left with the pure sand. But right now that's looking pretty much like pure sand. If we let it dry it'll be sand. So I've now got a sample of pure sand and how's my filtering doing? The filtering is almost done. There's very little liquid left in the funnel. It's almost finished. The dripping is slowed down quite a bit. So I could probably stop right here. I'm going to pull it out of the clamp and bring it over so you can see. So there, I think you can tell in the filter paper, there's the black residue. That's the black charcoal. So now we have a sample of pure charcoal. We could if we used a larger sample, we could scrape that off onto a scoop and we'd have pure charcoal in the scoop. Or I could take a picture of this with my camera. In fact, I could take the, fil the filter paper out when it's finished filtering and I can open it back up again, lay it down on my desk and I could take a picture of that as evidence that I had pure charcoal but scraping it off, putting it onto a watch glass perhaps to dry, I'd have a sample of pure charcoal. So now we have pure charcoal, we have pure sand, and now what about the salt? Well that salt was in the filtrate. The salt is in the evaporating dish. Do you see why I used an evaporating dish? Because we're going to evaporate. So I'm going to take a wire stand, my Bunsen burner, I'll put the Bunsen burner under the wire stand and the last step, the step that will give us the pure salt at the end is to do the evaporation. This Bunsen burner hose is wanting to push things all the way over so let me move this out of the way. So there's my Bunsen burner ready to go. I would put my evaporating dish over top light the burner and it's going to evaporate the water and we'll be left with salt solid salt in the evaporating dish. We could then scoop that out, put it onto a watch glass, put it into a test tube, and at that point we would be finished. We'd have a sample of pure sand, we'd have a sample of pure charcoal, and we'd have a sample of pure salt. We could then do further testing on those things if we wanted to. We could test to see if the salt is soluble in alcohol, for example.
In your sludge test, you won't be told what is exactly in your sludge mixture. You might have some charcoal, you might have some sand, you might have some salt. You won't know up front, you'll just know those are possible things in there. So once you found a white solid in your evaporating dish, you wouldn't know, is that table salt, is that potassium nitrate? So then you'd have to do further tests to tell the difference. So today we've learned how to do a filtration, how to use a funnel, a filter clamp, filter paper, how to fold it properly and put it into the funnel. We've learned vocabulary like the filtrate is the name of the liquid that comes through the funnel. The residue is what's caught in the filter paper at the end. And we've learned again how procedures as simple as decanting, shaking with water to dissolve things and decanting, getting things suspended so they can be decanted. Very simple techniques. Again, there may have been other ways to separate those things. This is not the only way to do it, but that was a pretty smart way to separate the three components that were in the mixture.